Hello and welcome to Save Your Spot. In this video you're going to learn about Leonardo da Vinci's early life and his first steps of becoming a genius. You may be wondering who Leonardo da Vinci was. Well, in a nutshell, Leonardo da Vinci was a famous painter, architect, sculptor and so much more. Some of his most famous paintings that I'm sure you know are the Mona Lisa and the Last Supper, but that's not all. Let's go right back to the beginning and find out about his early life, shall we? A boy in Vinci. Is from the first chapter from the book Leonardo da Vinci for Kids, written by Janice Herbert and published by Chicago Review Press. I hope you enjoy it. A boy in Vinci. The baby's mother rushed out to the yard waving her arms. A hawk was perched on her child's cradle. Shoo! she cried. The bird lifted its wings and flew off. For a moment, she thought it would grasp the baby in its claws to carry him away over the hills, but the child was safe. When she reached down to pick him up, he was following the hawk's flight with his eyes and smiling. The child, Leonardo, was born on April the 15th, 1452, in a mountainous region of Italy called Tuscany, near the small village of Vinci. His mother, Caterina, was a young peasant woman, beautiful and poor. His father, Sir Piero, was an ambitious young man from a wealthy family who was just beginning his career as a notary. Leonardo's parents did not marry each other. As a baby, Leonardo stayed with his mother. When he was almost two years old, he was taken from her home and raised on his father's estate. Sir Piero was often away on business, traveling to neighboring towns. Eventually, he met and married a young, wealthy woman, Albiera di Giovanni Amadori, and they settled in her home in the city of Florence. It was decided that Leonardo would remain in Vinci and he was raised by his grandparents and his uncle Francesco. Uncle Francesco was only 16 years older than Leonardo. Though he was young, he ran the family estate. He supervised the work in the fields where they raised olives, grapes and wheat. Leonardo adored his uncle and he followed him everywhere. It seemed to Leonardo that Francesco knew everything. As the boy and his uncle tramped through the vineyards and fields, Francesco taught Leonardo the names and uses of plants and herbs, the signs of approaching weather, and the habits of the wild animals who lived in the hills around Vinci. Francesco never tired of the curious boy's constant questions, Tell me, Leonardo would say, where does the river begin? Tell me, what makes lightning? Tell me, what happens to the caterpillar inside its cocoon? The local priest taught Leonardo how to read and write and how to use an abacus, but that was the only education Leonardo received. Instead, he spent many of his days wandering the countryside and studying nature. He explored the rocky crevices of the hills around Vinci. He climbed along the banks of the river Arno and behind the crashing waterfall. He walked through the fields of red poppies and blue cornflowers. He would jump on the bare back of one of his grandfather's horses and ride furiously down the dusty roads. Sometimes he would lay for hours beneath a tree, watching leaves move against the blue sky. 
He envied the birds as they soared over the hills and vineyards. Sometimes he would turn his horse past the home of his mother. She had married since he was taken from her thatch and mud home. With her husband, Akatabriga, the quarreller, she raised crops on a few acres of land outside of town. She had another son and four daughters. She was always kind to Leonardo, but whenever he saw her, he felt sad and left out. She had her new family, and his own father was so far away and concerned with other things. So Piero's young wife, Albiera, died, and he soon remarried another Florentine woman, Francesca. Leonardo barely knew this family of his. Instead, Leonardo concerned himself with the world around him. He found everything interesting, and everything he saw made him want to know more. He took paper and chalk with him on his walks to make sketches of all he saw. He studied the movements of birds and animals, the way the trees and plants grew, the rocks he found in the riverbeds, the light on the fields and the shadows of the dense forests. Leonardo's simple life in the country came to an end after his father died and his uncle Francesco married. His family decided he didn't belong in Vinci anymore and they agreed he should move in with his father and his new wife. The 14-year-old boy packed his few belongings and left the countryside for Florence. That's all we have time for now. Bye.